In my last video, I talked about the recent Darren Ravel article regarding the PWCC and PSA scandal. One of the things Ravel mentions is how a small group of individuals were able to manipulate the price of the Roberto Clemente rookie card in 2016. He goes through the rapid rise in prices, something that's been known as the buyer's club for years within the hobby. For this video, I'm taking a deeper look at this. Really, everything you need to know is right here in the price chart for the PSA 8 Clemente rookie at PSA's auction prices realized. You can see the price is fairly stable up until 2013. In 2015 to the peak in 2016, the reported auction prices really went crazy. Then from 2017 up to the present, the prices have dropped steadily and only started to gain again in the past year. As Ravel points out, what makes this so suspicious is that Clemente has been dead for over 40 years, so there is very little that could change the demand for this card so quickly. Let's start by looking at what the average auction sale prices were. In 2014, the average sale price of the card was 14668 By 2015, it was double that. In 2016, it was double that again, to an astonishing $65,000 average sale. And here you'll see individual sale prices that truly defy believability. In April 2016, there was a reported $73,409 sale from SCP Auctions. Then, three weeks later, there was a reported $131,000 sale with Heritage. But that's not the highest one. In July 2016, Goodwin reported an auction sale in excess of $150,000. Again, keep in mind that two years before, this was a card selling for only 10% of that number. Pretty quickly after that $150,000 auction, prices fell off a cliff, dropping to a $50,000 average for the remainder of 2016. But this was still 44% higher than what the card was averaging just a year before. What's really important to point out is the Clemente Rookie wasn't the only card to experience this unusual growth in prices in 2016. Numerous other iconic cards in high grade also roughly follow the same pattern. Ryan Rookie the Ernie Banks Rookie, Aaron Rookie, Koufax Rookie, 1951 Bowman Mantle, Rose Rookie, Reggie Rookie, and Seaver Rookie. It goes on and on. One possible explanation some offered in 2016 was that all these rapid price increases were the result of a strong economy. But notice how most of these cards show a similar profile on the graph. Rapid, exponential increases in prices then a steady drop for years later. The economy has continued to grow the last 10 years, so why would the card values drop so dramatically while the economy was still growing? The theory of the Buyers Club is that a small group of people pumped up the cards by staging fake auctions for high prices and later selling their own cards for huge profits. Then they moved on to another target, another high-end card, and did the same thing. Here, I have to preface that any organized manipulation is extremely difficult to prove. Sales show up in some databases, but not others. Some sales that we think might be shilled were actually won by legitimate buyers. You see, PWCC sold a number of these cards in 2016, and they accepted multiple forms of payment that were apparently not tracked by eBay, which masked these sales from some databases. So it's very difficult to look at the 2015-16 auctions and identify which ones could have been shill bid, buyer's club auctions, and which were legitimate. We do have certification numbers on most of these auctions though, so we can at least go through some of the card's sales history during this period and see if there's any red flags. Let's start with the second highest price card, the $131,000 Heritage Sale. The first reported sale of this card is in March 2014 by PWCC on eBay for $15,700. The next sale is the May 2016 Heritage Sale for $131,000. What happens next seems pretty suspect. In November 2017, the card shows up on eBay where it sells for only $25,000. Is it reasonable to expect that someone who paid the highest price for that card at that time would try to flip it a year and a half later on eBay? And look at the seller, Battlefield 0516. Google the name and you'll see pages of threads in vintage card forms describing numerous allegations of fraud on eBay. In a number of cases, they lifted scans of legitimate auction sales and tried to pass the cards off as their own. So this auction was probably a fraud too. Was the $131,000 sale with Heritage even real? I don't know. What do you think? How difficult would it be to shill bid a Heritage auction? Unlike eBay, their rules seem to take a hard line against non-payment, 
but common sense makes me question a sale that is such an outlier. Here are a few more sales that I found interesting. This card was originally sold in 2007 for about $6,100. In October 2016, PWCC reported a sale of over $50,000. Then, less than a year and a half later, after the bubble burst, the owner sent it back to PWCC, who could only manage a $31,000 sale. Here's a card that I mentioned earlier. Its first reported sale was for $73,000 during the run-up of prices. Eight months later, the buyer sent it to Golden, and they sold it for $36,000, $37,000 loss. Then less than five months later, PWCC sold it for $40,000. Here's another big loss. Before the bubble burst, PWCC reportedly sold this card for $80,000. It went up for auction again four months later and sold for another $37,000 loss. What are we supposed to make of all this? We have a highly questionable rise in prices, some suspicious individual sales, but not enough evidence to know confidently how it was done. What are your thoughts about all this? Price manipulation or something else? How did it work? Drop a comment below. Now before I sign off, I want to take a few seconds to tell you about a new YouTube channel, 3000 Hitman. John does a lot of vintage content and his videos are both entertaining and informative. He's got some sick stuff in his collection to show off too. I think you'll like his channel. A link is below. Check him out and collect what you love.